Carol Nash, Rita Johnson, Glenn Langan. Star on Family Theater. The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents The Empty Room, starring Glenn Langan and Rita Johnson. Brief portions are transcribed. J. Carol Nash is your host. Have you ever seen a little child who has strayed from his mother in a large gathering? At a circus, say, or the crowded streets of a big city? He is lost, alone, terrified. With all his heart, he wants to be with her, to grasp her hand, sense her protection and love. But he can't find her. She's gone. There's nothing he can do but cry his heart out. Well, I think a soul that has lost God must feel very much like that. Nowhere to turn, no one to help, nothing to look forward to but despair. Fortunately, there's a way for us to find our way back to God, an easy way, the way of prayer. Prayer is just talking to God, telling him we need him, telling him we're sorry for ever having left him. You've heard it said that more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Well, believe me, it's true. For the saint and for the sinner, and for the millions of us who are in between, daily prayer can work a miracle. The miracle of bringing us closer to the God who made us. J. Carol Nash returns following our family theater story, The Empty Room, starring Glenn Langan and Rita Johnson. There's a room in the Collier's house that you've never seen. That is, unless you've known Bill and Kathy Collier for more than two years. It's a little room, and it's always kept neat as a pin. And this seems strange, because it's a child's room, full of toys like an electric train, a football, assorted marbles, a jackknife, a catcher's mitt, and a toy xylophone. Kathy's in that room right now, sitting on the floor beside the bed, listlessly tapping the xylophone with a small wooden mallet. Bill just got home from work. He called her when he came in the front door, but she didn't answer. Maybe she didn't hear him, but he'll call again. Kathy! Kathy, where are you? Kathy. I guess I should have known I'd find you in here. Hello, Bill. Come on, honey. Get up. Come on. Yes, Bill. I was just... I didn't realize it was so late. I'll go and see about dinner. Kathy, wait a minute. Look... I don't know what to say to you. I don't know how to make you understand. There isn't any way to make me understand. But you've got to. You don't know what you're doing to yourself and to me. Staying in this house, sitting in this room. It's been a long time, Kathy. Tommy was part of us. He was all of us. But he's gone and he's never coming back. You've got to face it, Kathy. For your own good, you've got to face it. I try, Bill. I really do try. But how can you with this to remind you all the time? Darling, if you'd only let me sell this house. Or better yet, if... If you would consider adopting a child. No, I've told you, Bill. I'm not trying to be mean or a martyr or anything like that. It's just... Well, you say I've got to face it. How can I? It isn't so easy. It isn't something you can put in a closet and lock up and say I've forgotten. It's in my mind. In my heart. I guess I'm just not strong enough. You are... And I know it's because you, you love, didn't love him any less than I. It's hard to explain. It's just the difference in people. And with me, moving out of this house or adopting another child isn't going to do it. Because nothing's going to bring Tommy back to me. But, honey, don't you see that... No, you don't see, do you? I'm sorry. Oh, don't be sorry, Kathy. I just wish I knew how to help. And I guess maybe running a home like this, it's an old story to you, Mrs. Beecher, but it's been nearly two years now, and my wife just can't seem to pull herself out of it. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad if we could have another child. But according to the doc, it's out of the question. 
You can see how tough it is on Kathy. Yes, I can. Hard on you, too. Oh, I make out. How old was your boy? He's... He was nine. Were you interested in adopting a boy of about the same age? Well, I don't know if we're interested in adopting one at all. I just thought that... Well, I am interested, but... You don't know how Mrs. Collier would react, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Right now, she can't think of any other kid but Tommy, and... Well, I figured that maybe, maybe if I could get her out here, and she could see a kid or two... Oh, I don't know. What do you think, Mrs. Beecher? I'm just about crazy. Do you think it's a good idea? Mm, it's a good idea, but I can't promise that it'll work. Well, I'll try anything. We have a lot of fine boys here. Would you like to meet them? Uh, no, 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 thanks. I... Uh, suppose you pick out a boy that you think we'd... Would that be all right, Mrs. Beecher? I, I could bring Kathy It'll out. It'll be all right, Mr. Collier. Can you come out tomorrow afternoon? Yeah, fine. I'm off Saturday afternoon. Make it about three. I'll have Jerry here in the office. Jerry? He's almost nine. Almost nine. Well, thanks, Mrs. Beecher. Thanks very much. <laughs> Nearly there now, Kathy. I wish you'd tell me where you're taking me, Bill. Don't you like surprises? <laughs> you used to like them. <laughs> well, here we are. You mean this is where we're going? Mm. In this house? Yep. Well, who do we know that lives here? Nobody. Yet. Come on. Bill, what are you up to? I don't know. Yet. Well, hello. Mrs. Beecher? Come in. Uh, thanks. Uh, this is my wife, Catherine. Honey, this is Mrs. Beecher. How do you do? I'm so glad you came out. Well, I guess I would be, too, if, if I knew what it was all about. You mean Mr. Collier hasn't... Oh, I see. Well, please sit down. Jerry? Yes, ma'am? Will you come in here, please? Bill. Bill, what is this? Mrs. Collier, this is the Helen Beecher home for boys. And this is Jerry Allen. Hello, Mrs. Collier. I don't understand. Mr. Collier thought perhaps you'd like to meet Jerry. He did? Yes. Well, Mr. Collier was wrong. He was all wrong. Kathy. I don't know why you did this to me, Bill. No, please, Kathy. No. Wait a minute. No, Bill. I'll be in the car. Well, I guess it didn't work, did it? Maybe it would have been better if you'd told her. Yeah, maybe. But I was afraid she wouldn't come. I guess it was a bad idea all around. Did I do anything wrong, Mrs. Beecher? No, Jerry, of course you didn't. Guess I'd better go, huh? Uh, Jerry? Yes, sir? Uh, my name's Bill. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. You're sorry. I'm sorry. I thought maybe we were going someplace. <laughs> so did I. Guess the lady didn't like my looks, huh? Oh, no, 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 Jerry, it isn't that. You see, she lost someone kind of like you, and, well, she's... I don't know how to explain it to you. You don't have to. I understand. Yeah, Jerry, I guess you do. Sure I do. You know, it works both ways. Yeah. I see what you mean. Guess I'd better go. All right, Mrs. Beecher? You may go, Jerry. Say, uh, Jerry, uh, I was just thinking, maybe tomorrow, if it's all right with Mrs. Beecher, and if you'd like to, maybe we could go someplace, you and I. How about it? Could we work that out, do you think, Mrs. Beecher? I don't know why not. Sounds good to me. A ball game or something? Huh? No kidding. Pick you up about noon and grab a hot dog or something? No kidding. No kidding. You got yourself a deal. Hey, how about that pitcher? He was really from Brooklyn, wasn't he? <laughs> you can say that again. Hey, Jerry, we better get back before Mrs. Beecher comes out looking for us. Yeah. Well, maybe we've got time for just one more hot dog on the well, way out, you huh? you sure know a way to a man's heart. I do? Well, like you once said, Jerry, it works both ways. So that's what goes with a circus. Yep. Terrific, huh? The way that elephant ate those peanuts right out of my hand. And lifesavers, <laughs> too, holes and all. He liked me, I bet you. I bet he did, too, Jerry. And the clown who got kicked by the donkey. Do you think that hurt him? Nah, I don't think so. And the fire eater. And the fat lady and the tattoo <laughs> man. Wait a minute. Take it easy, son. What'd you say, Bill? Take it easy. Yeah. Well, how about that trick where they shoot the man out of the cannon? Do you think they use real people? Sure 
sure they do. Thanks for taking me, Bill. <laughs> Skip it, Jerry. Wish it could be Sunday every day. Yeah, I know what you mean. I go for Sunday these days myself. I'm about ready to take off. You want anything before I leave? No, nothing, thanks. Now, you're sure it's all right. You know, I don't have to spend every Sunday with the kid. I could take... Oh, I want you to go, Bill. You're a different man since Jerry. Oh, Kathy, I only wish you could see it my way and... Oh, please. We've been through it over and over again. I just can't feel the way you do, but I'm willing to understand you as long as you're willing to understand me. Okay, Bill? (laughs) Okay. It's just that I feel like such a heel sometimes, and then I get to thinking about Tommy and all... I mean, Gary... Oh, Kathy, Kathy, I'm, I'm so mixed up. It's a kid. He makes me forget and remember all at the same time. And it's good, darling. It's good. It helps. It'd help you, too. He needs us, just like we need him. Can't you consider it, Kathy? Can't you? You'd better go, Bill. Jerry's probably waiting. Yeah. Okay, darling. It's not good to keep a kid waiting. <laughs> Well, here you are, Jerry. Back the same day. Yeah. Have fun. Wow, these sunnies are real neat. (laughs) Hello, Mrs. Beecher. Oh, hello. Well, here he is, all in one piece. Have a good day, Jerry. Yes, ma'am. Swell. See you Sunday, huh, Jerry? I'll be waiting for you. Thanks a lot. So long, Bill. So long. Mr. Collier, could you come in for a minute? I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, sure. Anything wrong? Sit down, won't you? Thanks. I thought I ought to tell you this because you mean a great deal to Jerry, Mr. Collier. It's a little hard to... What's wrong? Well, Jerry's being considered for adoption. He's... Oh, I see. By a very nice couple. I wanted you to know because, well, if you think there's the possibility that Mrs. Collier might have a change of heart, I'd naturally want Jerry to go with you. I know he'd want it. Does Jerry know about this? Not yet. I want to be sure before I say anything to him. You mean a lot to Jerry, having a family at a home? Yes, it would. Yep. Look, Mrs. Beecher, don't say anything for a little while. Could you do that? A little while? But you understand that I can't keep these people waiting too long. Oh, sure, I understand. It won't be too long. It can't be too long. <laughs> Kathy. Hello, Bill. When are you going to quit this? You and Jerry have a nice day? We're going to move out of this house. I'm going to sell it, so help me, I am. No, you're not. You promised me you wouldn't. Then I'll break my promise. I can't stand seeing you like this, sitting in here all alone, crying your heart out. It isn't right. It's crazy. Is it, Bill? Oh, honey, listen to me. I know how you feel. It was mine, too, you know. My heart got broken into just as many pieces. But you've got to pick them up and put them back together again, honey. And it'll be so much easier away from here. No. Well, then at least do something about this room. Oh, darling, better yet, if you want to leave the room like this, a room that was meant for a kid... What do you mean? I mean Jerry. He's just right for this room. It's Tommy's room. It always has been, and it always will be. Oh, you just give it a try, Kathy. It's so quiet around here all the time. I think that's what gets me the most, and Jerry is the noisiest darn kid. Oh, you get to love him, honey. Just seeing him on Sunday has made me love him. Please, Kathy. Why do you do this to me, Bill? Oh, if you could just see him, get to know him. I've told you before, and I mean it. If I can't have the one I want, I don't want anyone at all. <laughs> But you see, Mr. Collier, it's been nearly a week now. I've really got to let these people know. Oh, sure, I understand, Mrs. Beecher. I I guess it doesn't look good for me. I'm sorry. I had hoped that it would work out. So would I. So would I. What's the deadline? I'll have to let them know by tomorrow. I see. It's asking a lot, I know, Mr. Collier, but... Well, I wonder if you'd tell Jerry... You mean you want me to tell him that he's going to be adopted by two other people? Now, look, Mrs. Beecher... Well, you see, he'll take your word that it's the best thing for him sooner than he will mine. 
Will you do it? I see. Well, okay. I, I'll tell him before I bring him back tonight. Jerry? Yeah? You got something on your mind? Yeah. Jerry, there's something I want to ask you. Sure, Bill. I... Look, uh, I, I'd like to go by my house. Is that okay with you? Matt! Yeah, I'd just like to run in for a minute. You may not even have to get out of the car. And I guess it is asking a lot, Kathy, knowing how you feel and all, but... Where is he? He's out in the car. Now, look, you don't have to, but... Well, I just thought this will probably be our last Sunday together, and I'm having a hard time telling him. Kathy, will you help me? Why did you bring him in? Will it be all right? Oh, stop acting like I'm a witch or something. Of course it's all right. <laughs> Thanks, honey. But I hope you don't think it's going to... Make you change your mind? No, Kathy. Sand. You should have seen him, Mrs. Collier. You'd laugh. It sounds like a lot of fun. You can say that again. Uh, I mean, yes, Mrs. Collier, it is a lot of fun. Well, I've wondered what you two do on Sundays. <laughs> I guess I knew you went to the beach because of the sand on the bathroom floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, darling, I caught it. I'll unload before I come in next time. Once, once we went to the circus, even. It was really something. In the ball game. And gee, we go every place. We never decide where we're going till we get in the old bus and give it the gas. Isn't that right, Bill? That's right. Would you like some more pie, Jerry? No, thanks. I'm full up to here now. Sure was good. Don't ever remember having supper in a real house before. Sure gives a guy an appetite. Sure does. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, Jerry? Yeah, Bill? Uh, oh, nothing. Oh. Jerry, I think what Bill was going to say was that, well, you can have supper in a real house every day. What, what do you mean? She means that... Look, Jerry... Some people, some real nice people want to adopt you. They do? Yeah, Mrs. Beecher asked me to tell what, you. What people? Well, I don't know their name, but... Oh, I get it. I've been trying to tell you all day, Jerry. You mean you want me to go with some other people, Bill? Well, it's only because it's the best thing for you. You'll have a home and a family and, like Kathy said, supper in a real house every day. I guess, I guess I'd rather have hot dogs with you on Sunday. But, Jerry, you don't understand. Maybe I don't, Mrs. Collier, but I'd just as soon stay at the home, see Bill on Sundays. I guess it sounds kind of funny, but, well, if I can't have the one I want, I don't want anyone at all. No, it doesn't sound funny. It seems like I've heard someone else say that very same thing. Guess it works both ways, huh, Kathy? Yes, I, I suppose it does. Well, if you two are finished, I'll clear up the dishes. Be glad to help, Mrs. Collier. Oh, oh, uh, no thanks, Jerry. You'd better go and wash the pie off your face. Yes, ma'am. Bathroom's at the end of the hall. I'll find it all right. Kathy. Yes, Bill? Kathy. Thanks for dinner. It was swell. Bill. Yes? Yes, Kathy? Nothing. I'd better clear these dishes. Oh, well, uh, I'll help. Let me help. All right, honey. Oh. oh, no. Tom. Tom. Kathy, honey, take it easy, please. Don't look like that. Jerry didn't mean to. It's my fault. I shouldn't have brought him here. I just thought that... Oh, I'm sorry. Believe me, I'm sorry. I'll get him out of here. I'll take him right back now. Yeah, Kathy. Oh, I thought you'd never get here. I just called your office. I was afraid something had happened. <laughs> no, nothing. I guess I'm just getting slow in my old age. I'll bet you're starved. Uh, I've got something good for dinner, Bill. Something you like. Look, Kathy, about last night, I've been thinking about it all day, and... Oh, honey, I'm really sorry. Sorry I made you cry. You know I wouldn't do that for anything... Oh, we're not going to talk about it anymore. It's all over and done with. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. As long as keep... Kathy. Yes, Bill? Kathy, I, I, 
I do hear it, don't I? Yes, you do. It's lovely music, isn't it? He's really here. Jerry's here. He's here to stay. I guess there's not much sense in having that room, unless we've got a boy to put in there, is there? No, no, of course not. That's what I've been trying to... Oh, Kathy. You'd better go and tell him. Tell him to wash up for supper. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'd better. Hey, Jerry! I'm coming! And Bill, tell him we're having hot dogs. Have you? Honey, it isn't even Sunday. <laughs> This is Jake Carroll Nash again. You know, as I was listening to the story of The Empty Room, a new thought struck me. Like Kathy, many of us are tempted to say, if I can't have what I want, I don't want anything. But life isn't like that. Often we have to settle for the second best. The strange and wonderful thing is that so many times it actually turns out to be first best. I guess it's just that God knows better than we what is really good for us. The person who prays regularly will understand that. The family that prays together each day will realize that God is always protecting them, always binding them closer in a bond of unity and love. Yes, they will come to understand that the family that prays together stays together. Thank you for being with us. And God bless you. Our grateful thanks to J. Carol Nash, Rita Johnson, and Glenn Langan for their appearances, and to Martha Wilkerson for writing our play. Original music was scored and conducted by Max Tear. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Brief portions were transcribed. The supporting cast included Johnny McGovern and Kay Reel. Next week, Family Theater has invited Diana Lynn to star in Throw Your Heart in the Ring. Your host will be Gary Cooper. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when Gary Cooper and Diana Lynn will star on Family Theater. Your announcer, Merrill Ross. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.